All right, cool. Let's get started. Um, so we'll start with the mafia, so that way we can kind of tie it back into our last lesson. So this one here, what's asking you to define, or you could draw an image to explain those inter and intramolecular bonds. Really important that you guys start learning those vocabulary. Um, science, unfortunately, is a very vocab heavy subject. It's basically its own language is the way I would describe it. Uh, and the reason why I definitely want to start with it as I do now is because uh, we're going to start looking at some examples of these intramolecular and intermolecular bonds over the next couple of lessons. So I personally find it easiest to explain answering questions for this assessment. And in, fact, in general, most markers will have to draw something to explain yourself or to further kind of complement what you've been writing about. Um, it makes it really easy for us to see your understanding. It also helps give an extra layer to your answer because now you can show it in two ways. Or maybe you make a mistake when you're writing and it doesn't make sense, but the image does make sense. So there's going to be a couple of instances where the image is going to really help you uh, get some points. So, anything really works. I like to draw water molecules because I think that's the easiest way to kind of see it. It's kind of tiny, but it's not great. All right, so oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So, when we are talking about the intramolecular bonds, we're talking about the bonds between our atoms. You can say forces, you can say bonds. So that one is the chemical bond that are between the atoms. And that's kind of like a helpful written definition. The, um, remember, the way I remember it is it's traumatic to break it apart because it requires quite a lot of energy. We're changing what we have currently. The intermolecular bonds are the ones between my molecules. And I'm drawing them with little dots. Thank you. 
so there's like one student that's still writing so that way we can at least okay don't worry i will scan everything and put it online uh in case you guys need anything so Lesson plan for today, we are looking at making some observations. We're also going to be describing what we see and trying to explain it. I want you guys to have a chance to kind of look around first and have a think before I give you the actual reasons why. We also have a few videos to show you. Um, a lot of the reasons why I haven't done a lot of videos for these guys is because we can't do them in the lab anymore because health and safety makes it unreasonable. So Mercury and anything in group one, we can't actually do anymore, but I'll show you guys what we need to see. Um, cool, and then some other things I wanted like to mention are some exceptions to the rules, and also we'll wrap up today's lesson with a monkey choice. I'd love to try to give you guys those opportunities so you can choose what you want to work on, and you can pick something at the right level. Cool. Right. I'm going to give you guys some coffee beans as you guys start off great. Everyone kind of just popped right into it, and I think that's um, really great. So I'll give you a reward for that. Right, here I have the same criteria that gives you a lot of the checklists. You can go ahead and take them off when it comes to covered and tab. Uh, and then I've given you some extra columns when you are revising and checking your understanding. Cool. All right. So I'm just trying to get my clicker to make my life easier. We're going to start with making some observations. And this is going to seem rather silly, but I'm looking for any excuse for us to go outside and take off our masks. Okay, so we're gonna go outside and we're gonna go look around and I want you guys to collect a twig, ideally a dry one, not one. And we're going to be looking at that twig and we're going to So let's have to bring that outside. Like I said, it's gonna seem rather silly. <laughs> All right. So or a piece of wood, something. Like I said, it's going to be silly, but it's going to help you guys start thinking. Right. My PowerPoint is not on the board. There's some things that I want you guys to do. First off, I want you to make some observations and basically kind of think, compare, and contrast when we're looking at this paper clip and we're looking at our twig. What are some things we notice? The other thing I want you guys to think about is I want you to see if you can change the shape of these items that we picked up. So obviously, with a paper clip, you know that you can bend paper clips, and people like to like undo the paper clip and make a nice kind of straight little thing. So I'm going to show you down with both your kid and the paper clip, and I want you to make some observations about what happens when you change its shape. Does it stay in that new shape? Um, can it be reversed? Yes. yes. That's one of the observations I want you to make. Yeah, make some observations, chit chat. If you do want to write it down, you're welcome to. But I just want to give you guys time to think about it. The other thing you can do with an observation is to try to break the twig and to try to break the paper clip. Very hard. So, have a little play for a few minutes. Make some observations. See if you can break the paper clip. See if you can break your twig. <laughs> so, we're going to be thinking about this paper clip and we're thinking about our little piece of wood that we picked up or twig. Um, first off, what are some of the observations you notice about the paper clip? Yeah, Ruben. Mm. It's smooth. What else can you look at it? Shiny. Shiny is a nice good word. Uh, I think those are the two main ones that I wanted you guys to pick out. What about the piece of wood? Oh, it's yeah, it's not, it's coarse, it's not shiny, it's definitely a lot rougher. This one's shiny. That one's shiny, but maybe I can create a piece of wood. Maybe there's a black one. Um, 
When it came to changing the shape of these items, could you change the shape of the wood? Uh, by breaking it? So it wasn't a reversible change? Some of the maybe wetter twigs would be able to bend it, but it may not hold that bend shape. What about the the paper clip? You can break it. We can break it. We can bend it. We can change its shape. Does it hold the shape that it has? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I could probably in theory reverse it. If I was really careful, I could probably remake the paper clip um, with more or less the same bend. Um, breaking the tree. How is that? Easy. Easy. What about the no. That was really hard. A lot of you guys were trying to like bend it quite a few times, and we'll talk about why that was the case. Okay, like I said, I want to make some observations. Have you guys ever thought about why these two things have such different properties? Why does the metal have these sort of properties, whereas the piece of wood doesn't? It's different material, good. And we're thinking basically about the atomic properties of these things that give it these, um, or sorry, the, the atomic um, makeup of these things that give it these different properties. So that's what we're thinking about, and that's what you guys are going to be looking at. But I'm not going to tell you just yet, because I still want you guys to have a little think and kind of make some guesses before I can give you the answer. So we're going to see a lot of little of chemistry making observations and then going back to the atomic level to figure out why. So in the booklet, I just provided you guys an image of what metallic solids look like when we are thinking about it at the atomic level. Um, what I want you guys to do is some of the properties before we talked about them. Um, I want you to think about when you're looking at that metal, that structure, and thinking about your interactions with metal, you can know some of these characteristics of metal already. But you already probably know that metal is conductive, it's an electrical conductor. So I'll give you some of that as well. Think about the image that's been provided for you. Describe that image and think about can you explain any of those properties yet. Now don't worry if you can't, because that's the whole purpose of this lesson. But I'm going to start thinking about that. Feel free to annotate the image. Uh, for the describing and explaining. So let me just grab a booklet so you guys know what you're looking at. You're looking at this image here. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see what page number on here. This is the slide number. Basically number nine. Or not number nine, but this page. And if you look on the next page, it has the space you need to write about what you're describing in the And then this is what you're You have to be able to display the project, but this is the Last year, that opposites attract, that positive and negative that attract. Now, 
This says free, and free is really important. And in fact, I'll show you a little gif because it better um, communicates across what is actually happening in that metal. So when we're talking about free electrons, we're talking about electrons that can actually move around. The other word we use to describe them is delocalized. They're not local to any atom. So that's going to give it lots of unique properties when we are looking at it. Are you okay with that so far? All right. Cool. So, the metal is their malleability, their ductility, and their high melting point. And explaining why it has those properties. This here is some jewelry that I actually made in high school. I did a metalworking class when I was in high school. And it's a really good way to show you what I mean about these kind of properties. So first off, you would notice that it's shiny. We made that observation. Uh, malleable, you can just hit it with a hammer. It's hot and it changes shape. Uh, which is what I did with a lot of these pieces of work. Uh, ductile means you can pull it and you can make it into a thinner and thinner wire. So that's what I did for that piece over here. Um, and it has a really high melting point as well. So let's talk about why that is the case with reference to the atomic structure. A moment. And I think I need to close and open the program again because it doesn't seem to be smart enough to realize I plugged it back in. All right, so this is in your booklet. You to jot down notes. You're welcome if you want to just type them up instead. But we want to think about what are the different states, what are the different properties, and why. So, as I was talking about, these three electrons, this is also known as delocalized. And basically, when they delocalize, it means it can move around freely. It's not tied to any specific nucleus. Are we good with that so far? This is going to help me figure out why it has certain properties. So the first property is the state. So state-wise, what do we normally see metals at? And room temperature. Solid. Can we just explain why is it a solid? The reason why it's a solid has to do with the metallic bonds we were talking about yesterday. So these metallic bonds are basically going to be between that positive nucleus and the valence electron. But the thing you have to remember is that since these are delocalized and the electrons can move around, we have lots of metallic bonds as well. So there's two factors in here. First off, we have very strong metallic bonds. And there's a lot of them. So, if I keep it with very strong bonds and there's a lot of them, we think about heat energy. Do you think they require a lot or a little bit of heat energy to break it? A lot. So, that's trying to buy this as solid. So, there's a lot of heat energy to break the bond and thus change the state. So, that has a high level and high level of weight. Is that time? All right. So when we were trying to break our paper clip apart, you might have noticed that it took quite a while, and you were bending it back and forth quite a bit. And that's because you were trying to generate heat to have enough energy to then snap the bond between our metallic bonds there. Does that make sense? Be mindful of wearing your answers. You want to make sure very strong, lots of them, lots of energy to break. And therefore, those three dots, and therefore, high melting point, boiling point. Why it's a solid at room temperature. All right, so the next thing you might have noticed, we didn't make this observation, but it's quite dense and tight. When you look at the wood chip, it was quite light and airy. So the density, and I don't often ask you, but just in case, the reason why this is a very dense substance is because it's a 
together. So now I'm going to try to Keep over that up so we have some more. All right. Next thing on there is our shiny. How many other one metals are shiny and the wood wasn't shiny? These steps? It's all an image. What would cause the metal to be shiny? I guess it's because of those delocalized electrons. So it looks shiny because of the delocalized electrons. That's what's causing the shininess of metal, which is why we then use it as jewelry. I mean, there's lots of other reasons to use it as jewelry. It's malleable, it's ductile, and it's shiny and pretty. All right, and then if I smash it, so I make it malleable or I try to ductile it and make it into a um, wire, why can it reshape itself? Why can it change shape and not break? The reason has to do with that, again, delocalized electron. So since there's no set 3D structure, no set 3D bonding, what can happen is that I don't want to put my pressure and try to move my metal atoms around. It can break and remake those metallic bonds. So it can be shaped. We'll see other things that's not possible, and that's why it breaks when you apply force to it. So that probably has to do with the fact that um, there's no set. 3D structure. So if I apply any force and I apply any pressure to it, it just breaks and remakes new bonds. Applying force just makes breaks and makes new bonds. So there's no set kind of spot that the electrons need to be. Does that make sense so far? All right, I'll stop it there. And what we're going to do is look at some more properties. Um, does anybody still need to write down any notes? Or can I move it? Are we good? Okay. So let's now look at electrical conductivity. But I want you guys to watch this video and then working in your groups, I want you to talk about what you see. And again, tie it to the properties of the metal and why it might be able to conduct electricity. Now you have a little bit more information about metals, so you should be able to have a better answer. Fair enough. We've already seen a gift like that. You see, like I said, that's not directional water. Now, there's one else that's done that. All right, so take a moment, discuss in your groups what you saw, and explain it. We're thinking about metals and their conductivity. <laughs> Google Doc, not Google Doc, the, um, the document camera, again, in that little video, what was happening before we closed the circuit, the electrons were just moving randomly, um, and then when I closed the circuit, what happened? They stopped 
about space wheels music we'll just listen to it anyway so again I want you guys to watch this video describe what you see um, explain what you can explain now that you know more about metals um, and think about as well the pros and cons about having these types of wheels not only in space but also on earth and also think about why haven't we switched to these new wheels. You'll see what I mean, the real kind of beneficial uh, with what we want in a wheel. So why don't you add in a little bit of metals that make this kind of uh, space wheel design work? We know there's those delocalized electrons and it allows it to change shape. Now, in this case, it's able to return to its original shape. Um, so what it is, is they're able to engineer a specific kind of metal alloy, and they also can look at it kind of has a chain mill shape. So something about that is utilizing the metal's ability to change shape, but the structure they've designed allows it to return to its original shape. So it's really, really cool stuff when you think about these properties and you think about the atomic level, and that's what these engineers are thinking about. Um, so what are the points on this sort of ribbon? You know the pump, yeah, you know the pump moment altered any sort of air because it's we are having to deal with space. Yeah, so like I punctured my fire over the summer and I had to change it, and it was a real natural, and we can't afford to do it more in space. Also, it's sort of expensive into space that we don't want to spend spend spare tires. Um, are there any problems? Yeah, but it's problematic. 
And that can tie into then why we have seen these on Earth potentially is that when you're thinking about our conditions on Earth, we have water, we have snow, we have ice. And so compared to the moon, the moon's around the rock. And so maybe we haven't seen this switch into our day-to-day -day life because it doesn't work with our environment as well as it could. So yes, we don't puncture tires, we don't need to replace them, but then they may not have the grip we need to drive them properly on our road. So those are things we think about when we're trying to design something. And again, knowing the chemistry is important because then you know what to pick. All right, what else have I got? Saw that one. Oh, consider the following question. So you earlier and I thought it's a good simple question when you think about it. Example, 
you can then have some of that extra knowledge to it. So the correct exception to the rule is mercury. Uh, unfortunately, I can't bring out the mercury for you guys to play with because it's very, very toxic. But my mom, when she was a kid, they grew up playing with it in the lab. And she remembers pouring it onto the lab. It's really cool because it's just like little beads. And then you scoop it back up. And then you pour it again, make little beads, and scoop it back up. She said it was a lot of fun, but um, the teacher walked in and was like, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> that is really dangerous. Anyway, let's look at this video. All right. So even though I said as our general properties, um, metals tend to be a solid at room temperature, really high melting and boiling point, mercury is one of those exceptions to the rules. Uh, it clearly has a, a low melting point because it's a liquid at room temperature. Um, the other thing that's like that, I think it's gallium. Um, and I think you can actually buy that online. It has a very low melting point as well. And if you put it in your hand, your hand's actually warm enough for it to melt. Um, but yeah, this one's an exception because this one is the liquid at room temperature. So, back in the day, we used to have mercury in thermometers. Um, we don't obviously anymore because it's quite toxic, but any idea to why they did that? Because it's a liquid at room temperature. Do you guys think the thermometers work? So it just has to do with the expansion of the whatever the substance is. And so when it expands and gets warmer, it then moves up the, the marker. So they just, that's how they figured out, you know, where to mark it on the thermometer. But yeah, mercury is a liquid at room temperature and it can expand and contract at different temperatures. So we can use that as markers as on a thermometer. But obviously we don't do that anymore because we know how toxic it is. All right, the second exception to the rule are um, metals in group one of the periodic table. So that first column on that left-hand side. These guys are really different and they have lots of unique qualities. The first one being that they're really, really soft. They are so soft that you can cut it with a butter knife soft. Um, have a low density so again these ones like i said don't follow what we say as a typical pattern um these ones have lower melting and boiling point um the thing that's really special with the group one metal is that they're really reactive with water so it's actually quite rare that you would find a group one metal in its natural state uh, because it'll just react with things around it um what did i want to add about that all right I think the next thing is a video oh. Is there water in the air? Yeah, yeah there's water molecules. We can feel it right now with the humidity. So if I store something like sodium, how would I store it so it wouldn't react? In a jar? Pressurized. Pressurized jar? This is way easier we can do. Because then remember, you open it up, the moment you open it up, it's now exposed to air. No? We store it in oil. Oh. I love that, but it's like something that's so logical. Yeah. When other you have these reactive groups one metal, they store them in um in oil. So when we used to be able to do the experiments, and when I was in high school we could, but now we can't because of safety concerns, and you'll see why. You could take it out of the oil, you would cut it with like a literal butter knife, and then we would toss it into water and see what happens. We can't do that anymore. I'll show you guys a video showing that. And like I said, it's really, really neat. Um, this here is just an extension information. Uh, just because I think you guys would be curious about it and it really kind of goes into those metal properties. Uh, they won't ask you any questions on this during the exam, so don't worry about it, uh, sort of thing. Oh, ooh, that's a very tiny note. Um, and this isn't on your slide either. Um, they won't give you an alloy question, but if you're thinking about what alloys are, I want to kind of explain it to you and it kind of ties back into those base fields. Um, so when we're thinking about alloys, it's just a mixture of two or more elements. Normally one of them is metal, and then the second thing could be another metal. It could also be something like carbon. And what we're trying to do with those alloys is to get a nice, unique property that we're looking for. So, example of crude bronze. I gave you guys that the other day. I asked if it was an element, compound, or mixture. Um, I said, I'll take it if you say mixture or compound. Um, steel is another one. In that case, we're using iron to put uh, copper in. Uh, sterling silver is often that you see as uh, jewelry and metal. You'll notice it as sterling silver if it's marked, I think. Um, 
935, so it's 93.5% silver, and the rest is usually then copper. Um, and the reason why we have these things um, is to kind of mix to get us in the properties of the different metals. So we know there is a bit of a range with the metal, with, especially with those exceptions, and how that's going to affect the melting point. And so what we do when we mix an alloy, we just try to mix some of these properties together and get a metal that suits the function that we're trying to get. So like say, for example, the space wheel is some sort of metal alloy probably that allows it to have that more flexibility in that shape structure. Um, the other type of alloys, they tend to be stronger than just a pure metal. Um, and that has to do with how the atoms can slide. So if it's a pure metal, it's gonna be really easy for my atoms to slide amongst each other. Whereas it here makes it harder for it to slide. So that makes it a little bit stronger. So again, if we're thinking about design and what we're gonna do um, when, it, when we're making things, starting with silver, the reason why we make a little bit of copper in here is if you were pure, it'd be really, really soft. And so it would dent very easily and things like that. Add a little bit of copper, it makes it that bit harder, and now it's a much more durable kind of jewelry that you can wear. So these are some things to think about when we're designing these. Um, same thing about the charcoal. You can use a record to be used with carrots, like 16 carat, 14 carat, 24 carat. Um, and that has to do with the percentage of gold that's in there versus the other metal that you in. So the higher the carrot, the more gold is in there. The more gold that's in there, the softer it'll be. So for example, back in the day when they were testing to be if gold uh, coins, were actually real gold coins, they would buy it because if it was real gold, it would be soft enough to be cheap on it. So that's cool stuff to know. Oh. All right. Cool. So, what we'll 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 um, and then we'll wrap this lesson you guys have a little bit of a chill time because there's a lot to cover. Um, what I like to do with monkey choice, and what I like to do in general when it comes to homework and things like that, is that I don't really assign homework. Um, and the reason why is because I respect your time outside of school, you can have a break. Plus, you guys are working and caring for siblings and grandparents. Um, but also, like, it is good to do it. So if you do have the opportunity to do homework, I do suggest you do because it reinforces what we're talking about in class. Uh, especially if you run out of time, and I don't have time to give you a chance to get some work done. Um, the other thing that's really beneficial for doing homework is that we can use it as evidence for the unexpected event grade. Um, and so it's, um, we can collect some tasks to do that. So that's why I created that Google Doc online. Uh, for that other, you can type up work that you've answered, um, or you can take photographs of the stuff you guys have. Uh, we will be getting the side pads next week, so you'll be able to start doing side pad work and things like that. Um, so do kind of keep that in mind. I'm not expecting you to do all these tasks. I don't recommend you do all these tasks. It's just to give you guys different choices and some different recommendations. Um, I've also given it to you at different, different levels, so you guys can level up and keep picking things that are more challenging, and you can choose where you want to start. So, um, education purpose is a great resource if you're really struggling. Um, there is those beginning chemistry textbooks that are in the back of the room. Um, I'm happy to say if you guys want to check anything out, like the library, just let me know what you're taking and I can write it down. Uh, the green chemistry uh, workbook, again, are in the back over there that has some good information. And this is just kind of stuff that you can do to help you. Um, Scientific cases you'll get next week. There's a worksheet on the little classes that you can do that will reinforce what we've talked about today. Also, same thing that green country workbook in the back with textbook. Um, other things, just to kind of remember, there's things with the um, library and the AME books, the study pack, um, the stuff even with the beginning chemistry again for chapters and you can read and answer questions. Um, that I put at level three because that's when you're starting to actually apply and looking for a little more and field style questions. Um, so that's stuff that I would recommend that you do to kind of follow up with the content and you start seeing it applied into various questions. Um, if you guys want, you can take some time if you want to check anything out uh, for the weekend. Um, otherwise, it, what was say? otherwise, this worksheet is on Google Classroom, so you can always access that one. Um, what else do I want to say about this? This is on my Google site. So let me pull up my Google site real quick so you can see it. And that way, you know where to find things. Here's my Google site. We're going to level two. 
going to structure and we're going to our second lesson. Here we go. All right, here's the PowerPoint that I was using today. Um, the notes that I wrote, I will scan and put it on here as well. The video recording that I'm doing now will also go on there. Uh, here's the Mahi choice, a reminder of what you're supposed to be doing that. And again, I've listed it out on the website as well. So you don't have to open up the PowerPoint to get it. Um, so yeah, we have about five minutes left, so I'll recap. And if anybody wants to check anything out, we can. Um, properties. Um, in order to successfully do that, you should be able to define and explain what a metallic bond is. Really important to get, like I said, link it back to the atomic chemistry to explain the properties. With these properties, here is the list of the different things we talked about. Um, so you should be able to say, for example, talk about malleability and link it back to the atomic structure. All right. So you guys have five minutes. You can do any kind of checking out of books if you want. Um, or you can just sit and relax.